Wolf and Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. How you doing, Tim? I'm doing pretty good. I uh, 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 missed the debate last night. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think you missed much. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, uh, I boycotted the debate because um, it's on, it was on Channel 7, and it, it was moderated by Alan Krzyzewski, Gesundheit. Uh, and... Uh, I love Alan Krzyzewski because he did a story on me many, many years ago. You know, the sportscaster who was also the attorney. And now I'm the attorney who doesn't have a TV job anymore. <laughs> but um, I boycotted because I thought this would have been a great showcase for Cheryl Burton, uh, the much maligned ABC news anchor, um, you know, who was lampooned by Mark Jean Greco. But here was a chance for her to show her journalistic chops. Uh, I remember Kathy Brock, her predecessor. There was the debate between Durbin and Oberweiss. And I have never seen a local yokel newscaster with the ability to make a politician's head spin like Kathy Brock was able to do it. I mean, she 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 turned Oberweiss around and around. It was like he was churning his own uh, hot fudge sundae, sundae in his <laughs> own uh, ice cream shop. And she was great. And this was a chance for Cheryl Burton to do it and you'd think she'd want to step up to the plate but uh you know uh apparently she eschewed uh Gesundheit again uh that uh, opportunity so i I'm, I'm a little bit uh now what what do you think as uh, what do you think is going to happen in this election i think it's going to be uh I, I mean will bailey do worse if he's the nominee than genie ives did against pritzker i mean that's the bet right <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a kind of a low bar, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, you know, I would just think so. I just think so. Oh, you, oh, you know, and there are there's going to be another debate. I don't know if they're going to get all the candidates, but this one is going to be on AM five sixty. The answer, and um, Amy Jacobson is going to be one of the panelists. So I thought it was interesting that Channel Seven, which is the woke station, uh, doesn't have the woman on as a, a panelist. You have you know the dead white male, Alan Krzyzewski. Well, he's still around. I mean. Uh, even though that story he did, I mean, was many, many years ago. Um, but, um, you know, the so-called reactionary station is going to put a woman out there. I, I, boy, this world is a topsy-turvy one, isn't it, Tim? Yeah. So uh, the big issue, of course, and this issue's got legs. I mean, it's guns. I mean, it's still going, uh, you know. And I mean, it was a horrible, you know, horrific uh, thing that happened in Uvalde, Texas. And we I mean, we we're so familiar with it. We even know how to pronounce the name of the town uh, now, which is sad. I don't know. I think I've heard several different pronunciations. No, I know. The kinda, I heard it's kind of like the, it's kind of like the new Kiev. Yeah, right. Uh, you know what? You know, one thing that bu bugged me, you know, was these cops. And the, I mean, everybody can agree that the cops really were awful uh, here. But um, the you know, when I see them in their hats, their cowboy hats, their Stetsons, like they think they're latter day John Wayne's sashing and you know and then they were afraid to go in. I mean it's not the same cops, I realize, but I, I boy, that was they, I, I saw a picture and I don't know if it's accurate yeah. or not, but there was a picture of uh of the cops uh with showing off their new body armor that they had bought with a with a federal well, isn't brand. That wonderful. I mean <laughs> if they don't use it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, well, at this no, point, you don't want to mess it up. No, they're going to they're all going to have to go into witness protection. Uh, the, the cops probably. I mean, it's just just so bad. Did you know that only one third of Americans actually owns a gun? Do you own a gun? May I ask? I Is do. I right? do not. I Neither do, do I. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of like Barney Fife with them. I'm all ab abstraction, all theory. I'm in favor of it. But I wouldn't want to touch it myself. I did once go shooting uh, with uh, my brother-in-law and my dad, who was a lifelong liberal. And then he gets uh, puts on Facebook that he was at a gun range in St. Louis and all his liberal family and friends were uh, chastising him for having done it. But um, the interesting thing is that the biggest uptick in gun ownership and gun ownership's basically gone down over the years, actually, as a percentage of the population, even though we've got 400 million <laughs> guns out there. Huh, is I, that, I'm is, just waiting for a new survey on that. Is gun yeah, owners no, obviously killing themselves. No, right, I, I, <laughs> Population I, dwindles. Yeah. Gun yeah. Owners. We've got. But the biggest uptick is among women. And, uh, and and you can understand it. I mean, the women are out there in the workplace and everything. They're they're more vulnerable. They're they're exposed, and so they need the guns for protection. So I'm thinking, you know, as Joe Biden and his ilk institute all these uh, measures, which won't do a thing about you know getting the the random uh, nutcase who, who goes into a school, but will penalize those uh, who are law abiding. 
uh, it's, it's, it's going to actually hurt in, women who need the guns to protect themselves. And I'm thinking that's the point where you're going to see a big increase in transgenderism. Uh, men <laughs> will be identifying as women for the purpose of owning a gun. I, and stranger Absolutely. I mean, that, that's my big beef with the red flag laws is that if a yeah. guy, if a guy decides he's going to take out his revenge on his ex-wife, all he has to do uh, to make sure it's safe is just call in and flag her, uh, uh, call in the red <laughs> flag 1-800 number, flag her before he goes. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, it's, it's the law of unintended consequences. Every, every, uh, you, you try to do a good thing uh, and, 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 and it boomerangs on you. Um, and, and please, you know, go ahead, try to repeal the Second Amendment. Move to another state turn the red state blue and uh, and that'll be your solution if you if you're really serious about it so meanwhile uh, speaking of the lore here um, it, it, it's kind of interesting to me that we've got you know the hue and cry over Roe versus Wade which and I don't want to get too legalese like here but that's uh, was an exercise uh, back when they came up with this decision in what we call substantive due process that they looked at the due process clause of the 14th Amendment, and they decided that there are rights that come out of that, and that uh, one of the rights out of the penumbras and emanations of the Constitution is this uh, right to have an abortion. Uh, it was made up of, out of whole cloth. It's probably going to be overturned, but we're in Penumbras and emanations. <laughs> it, 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 it's... It's uh, well, you know, they they opened for Ferrani and Teicher years ago. Uh, on the <laughs> I thought Sullivan it was an show. episode of Stranger yeah. Things. Oh, well, maybe <laughs> they, they don't, don't 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 spoiler alert on that. Uh, there are uh, penumbras and emanations. The um, so you got these imaginary rights coming out of substantive due process, but good old fashioned real due process like uh, notice and and a fair hearing. Uh, you know, that went by the boards. Andy McCarthy was noting that uh, on the anniversary of, uh, of, of George Floyd and how, you know, whatever you think of, of the verdict, I mean, there wasn't a lot of due process in that no. trial. No, uh, you know, trial by with, Facebook. R- right. And the jurors not being sequestered, the judge thinking, oh, I've got to give them extra time here. And then they go out for, you know, for a couple of hours. Uh and uh, and intimidated by Maxine Waters and the like. So, uh, you know, so justice uh, has had better days than that. There is a new, um, there was a story in the, the West Cook News, which I've, I've got to admit, I don't uh, subscribe to, <laughs> to it. Have you heard of this publication? I, I have not. How long has it I, been around? I thought it was a Dan Prop front, but uh, which wouldn't be a bad thing. I mean, but they had a story about how Oak Park River Forest High School is uh, has, uh, has started all these race race based uh, pr- procedures like uh, allowing students to uh, to retake quizzes, not punishing them for missed assignments, uh, for not being there, things of that matter. And it made it sound like this was designed to help black students, and that it was specifically targeted for black students. And Unfortunately, the story is written such a way that that's exactly what you think, whereas the school, if you want to look at the program that they have come up with in a a light most favorable uh, to the school, says that, no, all these procedures will apply to everyone, whites and blacks. Now, we know that the reason they're doing it is because, unfortunately, the black students are not performing as well as the white students. I mean, if you look at ACT scores and the, and the like, I mean, there's a, there's a great disparity there. So, but, but you gotta be careful the way you write these things. Um, well, you also but, have the Asian students doing better than the white students. Now, interestingly at Oak Park, it's funny because the Oak Park Asians apparently aren't doing as well as the Oak Park whites. And I'm just wondering if the People's Republic of Oak Park is not the most attractive destination for Asians. They're not getting, they, they may not be They're getting, not getting the, cream, the, good the cream of the Asian crop. I don't know. That's, that's going into the weeds a little bit on this whole thing. But, but uh, you know, I, I actually even understand trying to help these kids, especially after what happened in the pandemic and, and, and minorities were impacted uh, the hardest by, by what happened during uh, uh, the pandemic. Uh, the pandemic response engineered by the teachers union. So I guess the teachers have to do the old uh, 
uh, two wrongs uh, don't make a reverend right thing and try and correct all that they caused by uh, giving kids a break on homework assignments and quizzes and the like. So I think what uh, Elon Musk said should apply to the teachers union. It's like, if you don't like the job, we'll find someone else that won't show up. <laughs> exactly. I couldn't believe Musk. I mean, Musk is unbelievable. I mean, I myself, as, a, as you can tell, I'm an at-home <laughs> worker for this. I have another uh, uh, job uh, that uh, I, I do at home. But yeah, I mean, executives have got to show up. There's something to be said for FaceTime. What was that commercial years ago? Was it EF Hutton or some other? It may have been United Airlines. I don't remember where they said, you know, we've lost touch with our uh, our clientele. I mean, you do actually have to meet people face to face. And I would think students and teachers have to do that too. Uh, and e Elon Musk's employees, yeah, he'll find another one. He'll find other ones. So, uh, you know, I love we'll that put guy. the dummy in front of the Zoom screen and go, uh, go <laughs> off playing golf. <laughs> Briefly, uh, Michael Sussman, we talked about this last week, not guilty. I mean, there's a whole bunch of complicated reasons why that happened. But the interesting thing is, and of course, the liberals are now saying, well, there's uh, that, that, uh, that, that just ends the Durham investigation. And he does kind of look bad on this. But the reason that Kazusman was not guilty was because the FBI may be even worse than he was. <laughs> so uh, when, Do when Durham, I don't want to say he plays eight dimensional chess, but when Durham writes his final report, I mean, he may have stuff, I, ho I hope he does, that shows how politicized the FBI is. And uh, yeah, okay, so the Perkins Cooey uh, uh, fungible attorney get gets off, but this was really a bad thing. So, all right, I think we've. Uh, Knocked out a few out of the park right here. When we come back, we're going to be talking about Norm MacDonald has a new special, and we can plagiarize because, unfortunately, he's gone. Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle on the Weekly Red. You know, I've noticed lately, everybody has an opinion. And I, you know, when I was young, it wasn't that way, you know? People would have maybe... I don't know, six opinions, you know. Sometimes you meet a guy, he'd have eight opinions, and you go, God damn, that guy's opinionated. But about six opinions, that'd be about, and most of them were about food, you know. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap, and uh, the late, great Norm MacDonald. Uh, hey, we've got to have about, I believe, about 75 opinions for this show, so... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in the old days, you could get away with one opinion. I mean, you know. And none of them are about food. No, none are about food. Uh, you know, I mean, E equals MC squared. That was back then, you know, it was an opinion. <laughs> it, it hadn't been proven. So, I mean, that, you, you, you could coast on that for a few decades. Uh, but yeah, Norm he got, McDonald. He got in a lot of trouble. People don't, people don't remember that, that. The consensus was that he was full of beans. Is, uh, is, it, took, it took Einstein several Oh, several... I thought you meant Norm MacDonald. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> pretty that, sure he's that full moth of beans, joke. Too. That moth joke. <laughs> Come on, where's the payoff, Norm? I, I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what Einstein said? He said uh, there was a headline, something like 100 German scientists say that Einstein is wrong. And he said, it only, you, know, you only have to have one correct scientist. So, um, but yeah, let's, let's do uh, science by plebiscite, which we seem to be doing in the Fauci era here. But anyway, as far as Norm MacDonald goes, uh, and I read this uh, Kyle Smith uh, essay in National Review. Basically, I'm just plagiarizing National Review in Commentary Magazine throughout this whole uh, broadcast. But um, Norm MacDonald has a special out posthumously. And uh, I, I know, Tim, you said last week, you never want to rob somebody else's material because they're going to be using it at some point. But, you know, with Norm, I mean, I guess we, we can. Uh, he, can't, he can't speak <laughs> yeah. for himself anymore. Yeah, yeah. So who are you going to say? Who's you going to We've got to speak for Norm. Sued? We gotta, well, it's not even <laughs> suing. It's just a, it's good works on our part to spread his uh, word. But uh, as, as Smith says, McDonald's in, in McDonald indulges a few hokey bits, but there's a lot of fresh, sharp material. As a kid, he said, I said to dad, I think I'm a little girl. And he said, I thought you had a C blank, blank, blank. And I was like, oh, yeah, you got me. And McDonald added that all of the above should never be said 
The only reason I'm telling you that is to show how hateful we were back then. I mean, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, that's worth at least 10 Chappelle's and five Ricky Gervais jokes <laughs> on the whole thing. And then um, he notes with pride, however, that his family was ahead of its time. For instance, we had a gender neutral bathroom. But uh, he so he does this uh, Zoom thing with Letterman and no audience. And it kind of looks like he's dying uh, out there. But nobody knew it. And uh, anyway, I thought we should repeat his uh, material. Uh, I ad- I admire him for doing the Zoom show. It's because uh-huh. I tried I tried to do a few of those. Uh, oh, yeah. as, as a comedian, and it just it doesn't. For me, a comedy is like a comedy club is like a musical instrument. And uh, okay. it's the job of the comic to play that instrument, to, right. to, to draw the bow with the Would setup say, and then you know, hit it lo- with the punchline. I love nothing more than talking comic theory. Uh, it, it reminds me a, a little bit when they have this guy, uh, uh, you know, come in to, you know, for team building exercises. Hey, everybody laugh. Well, tell me a freaking joke and I'll laugh. Let's yeah. talk comic theory here. Yeah, that's uh, like a, it's like holding a violin and say, "Play something." Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the uh, would you say, Tim, based on your experience, uh, to a reasonable degree of certainty in your profession, would you say that there's a symbiotic relationship? between the audience and the uh, comedian. Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, I mean, that's, that's, you, you can't, you, I, I can't do it without the audience. To me, uh, uh, working a Zoom show is like trying to play a symphony on a Casio. Uh, at, uh, a 64-bit, I might add. <laughs> Well, was I a good audience right there, Tim? I, uh, yeah, yeah, that works. See, that works. And by the way, I love uh, your charitable laughter for a lot of my jokes. Uh, I think I think at least... Low Rent Ed McMahon is what I think the review mm, called me. You know, <laughs> that's, I, I don't know. That's pretty good as far as I'm concerned because you could, you could be Arthur Treacher and, uh, you know, he wasn't quite as good as... Uh, as my as word. Was. There you go. Uh, but, in the, you know, and another thing McDonald said, uh, I don't know if it was in the special, but he was talking about kids with Down syndrome. And he said, yeah, I mean, they're terrible. Who wants them around? I mean, they're every single one of them is happy. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's just it's just the rest of the universe that, that doesn't want to look at somebody who doesn't know who's happy all the doesn't time. Know what's well what's wrong with you? Not to be sad about his or her state. Anyway, um, I think uh, I think though I think the reason why Norm I, I don't think he wanted to do it on Zoom. I just think he he just realized that the clock was ticking, which oh, okay, which, which kind of yeah. makes it which kind of makes it sort of sad for me oh, that he yeah. that he Absolutely. didn't have the time to to, to do it in a in no. a theater where it should have been. Look, I'm just reading these jokes and they're poignant. So I imagine you know, seeing him say it would would make you choke up as well. So um, Winnie the Pooh has gone into the public domain because, you know, the copyright expired after 95 years. Like, uh, and that means you could make porn out of Winnie the Pooh. There's, there's um, somebody who's doing... I think it would be German porn, Bruce. There we go. The, uh, I've, I've just, somebody came up with a slasher movie about Winnie the Pooh. It's called Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey. And uh, it's nothing sacred. The I used to love to read to my kids Winnie the Pooh because, you know, the rest of the stuff, the Dr. Seuss, I mean, it was OK, but I mean, it's so repetitive and, and dull and you're, you're trying to stay awake and you're hoping the kid falls asleep before you do, <laughs> uh, because otherwise your wife is going to get really upset. Well, the, the kid's reading to you, you've fallen asleep. It doesn't work. But A.A. A. Milne, I believe, actually hated children. And it's funny. Because he writes, everybody, it's very sarcastic, and it works on a number of levels. So you can like, you know, Disney, Disney of course, disney the whole deal, but it, it, it was multi-tiered. And I, I would chuckle. Well, A.A. A. Mills this, named, yeah. her, named her son Robin and put him in girls' shoes. So, I mean. There we go. There we go. So, <laughs> Obviously, she wanted to see him get I, beat up. I loved, I loved what I, I, I that was my my favorite was just reading winnie the pooh to the kids and they didn't get it they were too young but but i was laughing uh turning our attention right now to did you did you see this speaking of desecrating sacred things now that's a nice segue there okay that's De- desecrating great art the mona lisa 
Did you see what happened with the Mona Lisa? There was a climate activist. I guess we, he was dressed in a, a he was in a wig and to look like a woman and in a wheelchair. In a wheelchair. In a wheelchair. He was and dressed he in throws, a wheelchair. Yeah, he he was dressed in a wheelchair, and uh, he had the whole FDR outfit on, <laughs> and uh, he he throws either some cake and 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 cream whatever at the Mona Lisa, which is protected by glass. And you know, they had to wipe it off and everything, and, and, and it was horrible. It, but it did remind me uh, the cover of the cover girl and Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brasses, Whipped Cream and Other Delights. Uh, if you remember, do you remember that at all? At all? What, what boy our age doesn't uh, remember course. that album cover? I, it's, we, it's, it's we used to go through dad's record collection looking right. for that because we didn't have sports illustrated swimsuit we, editions and you couldn't the, the playboys were on too high a shelf <laughs> but you could you could see but, but there was that girl whipped cream and other delights and uh you know you'd play a taste of honey over and over and over again and and and, and she was there of course you know now i think i look at her what, what is she like about 25 years old max in that and that so that would make her if i can do uh my Jethro Bodine fifth grade cipher in right 85 here. about that 85 years old and that cream's got to have gone sour <laughs> uh, that, yeah. but that's who she looks like uh have you ever been to the uh luge as uh, Michael Jordan uh, called it uh, to have see the Mona Lisa been, have well, never yeah, been to the luge I, I, I was I was there about 30 uh, years ago and it feels like at the at the time, it felt like being at a Mike Ditka press conference because you have everybody surrounding with, with their camcorders back then, this this tiny little thing, and uh, of course the Mona Lisa a little more taciturn than uh, the Dit was, uh, but she did not invoke uh, Marie Antoinette to let them uh, smear cake uh, all over me uh, <laughs> the other day. She still had no comments. So, but, but but it was a horrible thing that happened right there, and. Um, Oh, let's see. What else have we got here on the agenda? Oh, baby formula. You know, it's uh, there's a shortage, of course. And speaking of dairy products, yeah, there we go. There, there's the segue you're looking for. There you go. Uh, there's been a uh, the drop in baby formula is attributed in part to the fact that women are not breastfeeding as much, in part due to the pandemic and them not getting la leche lessons or whatever you need a support group apparently to do this kind of thing and uh that's one of the you know, reasons it, yeah it seems there would be more breastfeeding due to the pandemic i mean yeah because it, you it, couldn't get out and get the stuff i it doesn't sure. make any sense but remember we were talking a couple of weeks ago about uh bet midler the the divine miss mammary who was saying that everybody <laughs> should you know start breastfeeding and it's not uh as easy to do it and, and, and it's uh, not just a job of women either men oh, should well no absolutely <laughs> in this day and age men should be uh, helping but, uh, out they got two nipples with nothing to do with <laughs> right them. apparently we are importing uh we are getting an airlift it's, it's the Berlin airlift in the other direction to us. And we're getting uh, United Airlines is bringing over breast milk uh, from Europe. So it'll be, you know, coffee, tea or Enfamil uh, that the stewardess will be saying to you. But uh, Biden didn't know until April that there was a shortage, even though his administration said it had been working on it since February. So, you know, he's always the last to know. He sent a post, you know, uh, uh, an envoy out there and wanted a postcard and nobody told him anything uh, about what was going on. And uh, I, I'm, I'm Yeah, even though it was his, his administration that closed down the plant. Well, and, yeah. and here's the other thing. Up until now, you couldn't get, you could not get European uh, formula. Right. The FDA right. would not allow it. No, no, right. Hey, we're, hey, Biden's doing a, a 180 on the Saudis right now, too. He's going to make goes to the Saudi Arabia because those gas prices are going to kill his administration. So we need your gas. We're choking off our own oil right now, but we need yours. Okay, I totally understand what's uh, going on, Professor uh, Wrongway uh, Peach Fuzz, or Captain Peach Fuzz, I think it was. Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. Morning, Kate. Yes, they're really uh, escalating this hunt for who might have leaked a draft document to Politico, now asking law clerks to sign affidavits and to they're taking steps also to uh, have law clerks turn over 
uh, cell phone data. This is a pretty aggressive move, but it does show how seriously they're trying to take this breach after four weeks uh, since Chief Justice John Roberts launched this investigation. It appears that they have made insufficient progress to uh, do anything but ramp up to this, this stage. But it's a pretty uh, forceful move, and it's caused concern among some of the law clerks there. Each year, the justices hire four, four clerks per chambers, and these are uh, folks who are in there you know, to do research, help writing opinions, and some of them are saying, you know, we didn't really sign up for this, and they're thinking, should they hire lawyers? Should they go outside and obtain counsel? Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap, and uh, oh, yeah, the Supreme Court is... Uh, the Gestapo now, uh, are, are they, Tim? So, uh, yeah, I, you know, and, and with, oh, I feel so bad for the law clerks, uh, you know, the, the law clerks who have to lawyer up. Hey, uh, sorry, uh, that's the way the real world works. Uh, you know, now you know how ivory, it feels. Uh, you've worked in this every tower your entire lives. Uh, and, and you know what? All you got to do is rat out the guy who did it or gal. Who, who, who did this. Um, yeah, it is, they are getting serious about it. I actually turned, accidentally turned on to CNN when they were breaking this story. I wanted to see how it was going. And uh, I was a little bit uh, apprehensive because they had in a double box there, they had the woman reporter who broke the story. They also had Jeffrey Tubin, And I breathed a sigh of relief because <laughs> They had him only from the chest up. And I mean, just because I was just so worried that uh, I was going to see something that I really didn't see. Jeffrey see. Dubin. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So they're going to try to get the uh, affidavits from these uh, clerks and cell phone records. And, you know, and somebody was saying, well, I mean, you know, when you give up your cell phone, you have to give it your password too, because otherwise it's just you know, uh, uh, an electronic instrument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to have to divulge this stuff because there was a leak, and that's a bad, bad thing uh, if we want to protect the sanctity of the Supreme Court. But of course, we don't really want to do it because the new Justice Jackson, uh, she, and, and I, I do have to go into my Keith Jackson every time I say Justice Jackson, um, he hasn't <laughs> even said it's a bad thing to protest at justices houses. So, you know, I just, I, I am, I am curious counselor. What's your opinion? I've heard, I've heard rumors that, 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 that it might've been Jackson that, uh, that, that leaked. So would she have been privy to the uh, opinion? That's what I'm asking. I, I'm asking I, your I expertise but, here. You know, I, I, I look, I work for a personal injury law firm, and it's a great <laughs> one. There's no question about it. But I don't know anything about you know what goes on in the Supreme Court of the United States. Okay, huh. you know I could tell you something about. Yes, yeah, so we have a one-third contingency fee. We don't charge you uh, <laughs> for the work that we do unless we recover. Do you think I know? From uh, the 14th Amendment and due process and Lochnerizing. See, I threw in a word there. Um, all right, let's uh, change. Uh, give me a segue here, Tim. Just go ahead. Give me a segue. I don't care what it is. Uh, I don't know where we're going, Doc. It doesn't matter. I mean, you're the segue <laughs> kid. You're the segue master. You're going to rep the reparations program. I think, think I would have had that in front of me, don't you? No. Right. As, you uh, know, uh, let's, go, up, let's go to Evanston. What's going on in Evanston? I'll tell Bruce? you. And it's right next door to uh, Wahoo, where you are, uh, Waikiki. Or... No. So in Evanston, um, right next to my hometown, Skokie. They have the, they decided to institute this. Uh, we've been talking about Oak Park earlier. There's the People's Republic of Oak Park. And then on the other side of the hemisphere <laughs> is, is Evanston, which is pretty woke, too. They wanted to have this reparations program. It was going to be via housing. They, were, they decided that it wasn't necessarily descendants of slaves because it was difficult to figure out who really deserved to get the money. And it, it was they were, they were having all kinds of problems that way and with... Uh, just, yeah, you've got you've got out. like you've got like Barack Obama, who actually has no slave blood, but his actually his uh, uh, his uh, ancestors on his mom's side were slave owners. So yeah, so there's a confusion there. But why are we even bringing him in here? Because he's Barack Obama wasn't from Evanston. I don't even know if he was from the United States. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you you know what they did? No, <laughs> he was born in Hawaii, right right in, the, in a hut right behind you, uh, uh -huh. Tim. But uh, no, I actually, it was funny about Obama. 
back when he was a senator, his PR guy, as you know, was trying to portray him as a Kenyan because it was exotic. Yeah, and, and, that's what it uh, said. That's, that's what it said yeah. in his uh, his bio was yeah, uh, no, born no, in I, Kenya. Well, he's a, he's a Kenyan. Uh, oh, oh, he wants to be president. No, he's he's he's. Isn't it more USA correct Bay. to call him a Kenyan American than an African American? Because Africa is not a country; it's a continent. All right, look, Jesse Jackson uh, coined that term, and and kudos to him for doing it. it was It was it was a great term. I'm I'm not going to go there. I've got enough battles. Uh, <laughs> so I'm trying to defend the West Cook News for crying out loud, and I, I got to take that case pro bono because I don't I don't think they have any money. So. Um, so, so they were having problems figuring out who qualified, but now they've got another problem. They were supposed to get all this tax revenue to pay for this program through the sale of legal marijuana and for this, this housing program, which I'm calling stoned masonry. Uh, I, you know, uh, <laughs> but but they, uh, they, they, they haven't gotten enough marijuana uh, receipts. So Evanstonians start getting Stonian and... Uh, you know, raise the money so that you can play, pay the reparation, re reparations. Pot's not selling in Evanston? Not, not uh, you would think so. Those Northwestern students, with yeah. uh, especially since they're woke as well, and uh, they feel guilty that they're going to a university that costs 60 grand a year in tuition. Uh, and, I have friends. And room and board, I guess. I, I have yeah. friends that, that, that enjoy this stuff. And uh, uh, they tell me that, that, that there, there's little reason to switch from their dealer. Because the the Illinois taxed oh. it so he heavily oh. that it's uh, that you might as well just just get it from your old supplier. Oh boy, that's uh, well. I love the loyalty. To, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly to your supplier. Exactly. Let's change gears here. Tim will come up with a segue mid through the uh, next segment. But uh, Channel Seven had a tweet saying, "Happy Pride Month." We'll be sharing stories highlighting the LGBTQ plus community all month long at abc7chicago.com slash pride. And I was thinking to myself, when don't they celebrate <laughs> the LGBTQ? <laughs> I mean, it's nonstop. It's ubiquitous. Sure. So, uh, you know, I, I remember years ago, I was listening to uh, Roe and Gary on WLS and the gay pride, then it was called the gay pride parade. And they were, you know, giggling about it, how somebody had asked them to be in it. And they were, they had kind of that, that Seinfeldian attitude, not that there's anything wrong with it. That was big. <laughs> and, you know, but uh, that won't fly now. I mean, uh, I, at, at the time, and I think I could, could have gotten away with this joke back then. Not now. I would never tell this joke now was that, and I'm all I'm saying it. You know, in a Norm Macdonald way, is you're doing it. You're doing a historic for historic it's, purposes. It's just how only. bad we were back then. But what I uh, what I wanted to do was I, I wanted to agree to lead the gay pride parade. But my sign would have said uh, tolerance, not acceptance. And would you have taken? No. So I don't, I don't think that would, I don't think that would have worked either. Anyway. So but now it's it's like everybody's excluded from the gay uh, the, from the pride parade. Uh, Richard Irvin, the mayor of Aurora, who has participated in these parades, refused to participate in this year's parade because they in Aurora because they wouldn't allow gay cops to appear in their uniforms because they didn't want to endorse the police. And there was a controversy about that in New York uh, a couple of years ago as well. Now, I, I mean, it, I mean, you're going to get to the point where I mean, you're going to be excluding all the village people. There won't be a cop. <laughs> There won't be a, a, a soldier. I mean, it'll be a construction the worker. Yeah, it'll be yeah, whatever. Uh, now, now JB Pritzker announced that he will be participating in the Aurora Parade, and I'm thinking, who holds the defibrillator behind him? That's uh, you know, it's like it's like the nuclear football. So uh, yeah, I mean, you got to be careful. I, mean, I can't imagine that he's going to be going more than you know ten or twelve paces. Uh, on that. <laughs> also, um, th I mean, did you see? Um, They're not going to put him on a float. Is, it, is that what he, he doesn't tell me? He won't float. He huh? won't. He won't float. Um, he, um, I, 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 now that we've gotten into Pride Month, somebody was showing on Twitter that Mercedes has like the pink uh, logo, you know, the Mercedes logo, but they have a, a, 
uh, the pride colors on, on their logo. But in the Middle East, where they, where they sell the Mercedes, they don't have that. <laughs> so sure. they know their customer base. And um, also, the Biden administration apparently is going to withhold funds for school lunch programs to schools that don't uh, come aboard the uh, transgender uh, I heard that. agenda. Yeah, and that's... I heard that. that unless you let, unless you let boys yeah. in the girls' locker room, they're, yeah. you're going to go hungry. Yeah, and and who's this going to impact? Yeah, poor people as well. So Maybe. Uh, yeah, that, that, or, or it might get boys in the girls' locker room. That's uh, that's, that's all we could ever. Let want. me tell you, when I was a kid reading The Hobbit, there's only one reason why I dreamed about that ring of invisibility, <laughs> and that was so, <laughs> to go into the girls' locker room. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, turning our attention to Ukraine, I, you know, I couldn't keep this straight. Was did so we give them, are we going to give them weapons that will go into Russia or not? Because I think there was a flip-flop flip on this. I mean, they, they, they kept changing the story. I think the latest is that they're not going to give the weapons. Uh, well, that, originally, that I don't think the weapons Ukraine. would have gone into Russia, but Russia's kind of moved. I, I see. I see. Well, I mean, uh, well, well, we'll explore that. We'll get to the bottom of that. Also, uh, some of uh, Joe Biden's gaffes, including but uh, not limited to the fact that he said he got an appointment at the Naval Academy when, of course, he didn't. Of course, he didn't. <laughs> Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle on the Weekly Wrap. risky as hell. Chances of success are 20 to 1. Never tell me the odds. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. So yeah, t do you watch Stranger Things, Tim? You know what? I made it through the second season. And, wait, a, uh, wait a minute. What happened? Oh, oh, from you did the first as well. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, but, I love why the did first. you stop? Why did you stop? I think I watched the first one twice. Oh, okay. well, that's good enough because the, if you watch the first twice, you've watched three seasons. Then. The magic was gone. I, the it, it, yeah, the, the kids were no longer kids. The uh, I agree. The, I agree. I mean, the, you don't have to exactly jump the shark in order to you know cause everybody to lose interest. I mean, there's just yeah, it's it was it was a fun gimmick with the '80s stuff. Yeah, and, yeah the writers and the monsters, had the writers yeah. had one season in their head. And uh, did not expect right. it to be as huge as it was. And then Netflix no. says, we need more seasons. And, and you can't make up for it by exponentially uh, increasing the cost of the episodes. Because I think the th that episode that you just saw a snippet of, was, what did it cost, like $35 million? And Netflix stock <laughs> is plummeting. But I, my wife and I have watched up till it's the, the last season, is, or this season anyway, is in two parts. And we just got through with the first part and the second part's on July 1st. But the problem I have, first of all, I mean, I confess, I actually had to have my wife explain to me what happened in the finale here. <laughs> so, and, you know, as you can see from the clip, it's a kid's comic book. I mean, this is not the most nuanced thing that you ever saw in your well, life. Well, here's what, here's, what, here's what I'm wondering. I was shocked that it's still, that, that they're still doing it. It's like Orange is the New Black. It's like, really? Or Walking Dead is another one. Is that, that's right. still going on? We watched sure. all of Orange is the New Black, which I've got to admit, that yeah, after about the second season, that was about, <laughs> but we, you know, once we commit, we sure. feel like we got we nah, to take it I to couldn't. the end. So, 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 so yeah. I got to ask you, because yeah. you watched it, are there, aren't those kids like in their 20s now? Easily. I mean, and they're easily. still riding bicycles and talking right. on right. walkie talkies. Right. I mean, they, they play Dungeons and Dragons. They're, they're going to be showing them, you know, in their walkers going into the upside down <laughs> world. So uh, here's one of the problems is you watch this and there's such a gap between seasons. You cannot rep remember what happened in prior seasons, especially Toronto. If you watch this uh, Bill Hader show, Barry, which is great it's a yeah. fantastic but I, I i we watched this episode and i had forgotten that he uh, had uh, murdered it, the is husband it spoiler is it spoiler uh, i can't uh, spoil yeah. because you won't even know what's going on the um 
that he Barry had murdered the husband of the woman who had invited him to dinner because that had happened in a couple of seasons before. And I, I didn't remember. It would really help to know that. And you're not going to watch these seasons all over again sure. in order to get ready for them. But uh, I mean, there's only so much Prevagen I can take. Uh, I, although I got to credit Barry, they had a car chase in this last episode that was as good as anything that your French connection worthy. Uh, <laughs> Steve a, McQueen bullet. Oh yeah. Right. I was, it, it was, and it was comical as well. Huh? Uh, but a, anyway, I had the same problem with better call Saul. Uh, uh, we, uh, okay. we, we picked, we picked that up. I can't remember when the last one was and it was, it was the same thing. It's like, okay, who are these people? <laughs> Right. <laughs> Who are they? Oh, oh, then they kind of explain it. Go, oh, yeah, I kind of remember that. Then you're confusing Saul with Breaking Bad, which is later. So, oh, yeah. Uh, and, oh, yeah. And, you know, they're always going back and forth in time in, in these things, and they do it in Stranger Things as well, but I don't want to spoil this. So, so you know, it's the whole 80s thing. And then uh, apparently this is the rage because Top Gun came out, and, and, you know, 40 years between Top Gun movies, and Tom <laughs> Cruise is killing it. I mean, it had like record box office. And so I'm just wondering, maybe, you know, a little mashup here. Tom Cruise shows up in the 80s in Stranger Things on July 1st, takes a jet up to Mach 11, move over 11, <laughs> uh, puts it on its back so it feels right side up and the upside down and takes it right into the mouth of that monster. And I'm not going to tell you who that monster is because I had my wife explain it to me, who it really <laughs> was. So there, there you go on uh, the latest on Netflix because I'm cool you know you life. know and, and the the way Stranger Things is going it, it, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like MASH actually lasted four times as long as the <laughs> right, actual the Korean, Korean War, War. the right. 80s are going to yeah. last 20 years 20 30 yeah. years well, by yeah. the time we're up to Stranger Things 15. If when, once we've seen McLean Stevenson in that one you know it will have jumped the shark uh so big new local yokel news I know you don't care about this at all but a former Bruce Wolf intern named Chris Bowden and a really cute woman were named the new Channel 9 sports anchors. Yeah, there she is, Caitlin Sharkey. Uh, Jared Payton continues as the son of Walter Payton at uh, Channel 9. I don't know why he didn't get the job. But um, in any event, it, it, this is the second intern of mine who has a job. Lou Canellis is the other one at Channel 32. I can't get a job, but my interns are getting jobs and you know that's the way it should be because i can impart my wisdom now uh on how to you know maybe maybe read the scores backwards you know like girls used to do not anymore they're savvy but girls used to say the score is four to six. Oh, isn't that cute you know, you never, it's like Rahm Emanuel when he said he was trying to show that he loved the bears they had gotten off to a hot start and he said oh yeah they're three and zero. Oh, really Really? That, no, that's not, that's not the way we say it. It's, uh, you know, it's like those spies, um, who, uh, German spies who claimed that they loved the Brooklyn Dodgers, but, but couldn't tell you who, who was on the team. Uh, so anyway, I, I, did, I do have the suggestion that the four said uh, and looked at Caitlin Sharkey it should appear one day a week on uh, the uh, Bernstein show on 670, the score. That's the, it's progressive sports radio. If you could understand that, they're very politically progressive. They, uh, yeah, they uh, so suffer. they cover they, transgender crack. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that. No, what they do is they, is they lecture you on on gay rights, on civil rights. They do that and uh, will not suffer fools like me gladly. However, they just so happen to be the last bastion of Neanderthalism because they don't have a woman who's a host on the show. I mean, the Marines are <laughs> on, on the station. The Marines. Uh, still don't look for a few good men, but you know, sports radio has to have guys talking about you know guys who are much bigger than they are hitting balls out of. Uh, so, so maybe they're guys, maybe they're sports talk guys who identify as women. That would uh, I, I, that, well, that would check it, the boxes. Now it? here's the thing: speak of the devil. You now you're segueing and you don't even realize it. That's how <laughs> that's how you know how clairvoyant you are. Because I was thinking I could host one day as a week as a woman. Uh, on the because I identify twenty percent as a woman. I love Broadway shows and, and and stuff like that. So, so I would qualify that way. Uh, you know, they got to do it because otherwise, you know, they're just sanctimonious liberal hypocrites, as if there's some other kind. I think uh, we. I think in the last episode we talked about you. Did you have watched the Notebook? Yeah, yeah twice. I think <laughs> so. Uh, the other big sports news is that Greg Olson, former Bear. 
is going to be the lead color analyst on the Fox broadcasts because uh, Troy Aikman left to go to ESPN with, uh, with uh, Joe, Joe Buck. And, but he's just going to be a placeholder for Tom Brady when Tom Brady retires. They've already committed like $350 million to Tom Brady when he retires. And I'm sure, I, I, know, I know, Tim, you thought of this just like everybody else did, that this is so reminiscent of Merv Griffin when he was a placeholder for Johnny Carson. Uh, in fact, you know, Merv <laughs> did such a good job. Do you remember? Johnny kind of stunk when he finally took over from Merv, and some were longing for Merv to take, it, take the show back, but, but Johnny knew that he was better. I mean, uh, Tom Brady, I knew, I knew Johnny Carson, and I, I doubt you're Johnny Carson, so it's going to be difficult for, I think. Conan, Conan was kind of a placeholder for Jay Leno. Who had already done it before, <laughs> which is it's, 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 it's getting confusing. Um, so the Me Too movement really took it on the chin uh, this week. Two places. So, so to speak. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, first, the, the Johnny Depp, Amber Heard verdict. And I actually saw that live. It, the jury, they wanted a fine for uh, Johnny Depp. They forgot to put the amount in. That is really, they had to send the jury back to put it. And then it, I, like most people, pseudo legal experts, we thought it was going to be like ten dollars. Well, it's ten million dollars that they gave uh, to Johnny Depp, and that I mean that really hurt. And I should have recused myself from discussing this because I'm a big fan of the Pirates of Caribbean music. Uh, at, at over the montage at uh, at the White Sox games before the games are played, they show a montage of White Sox highlights over all the years, and they play the Pirates of the Caribbean music. So that's why I'm a Depp fan, uh, not because you know. I, I, I don't think I made it past Pirates of the Caribbean two. I didn't make it past one. One was it for me. That was enough. One and but out. The, the second thing is that Elon Musk. Now, you know, that he's trying to take over everything. All the uh, sexual allegations are coming out against him. And somebody claims, this was in Business Insider, that he uh, flashed his erect penis at a SpaceX flight attendant. Should that be Space Triple X, I guess? <laughs> a- asking her for sexual favors in exchange for buying her a horse. And he, he denies all this. And I think, I mean, is that a rocket in your pocket? No, we haven't come up with a compact no, it's a model horse. like that. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, I mean, in exchange for a horse, I, it, it's an awfully big stud fee, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but he's denying all that. And finally, uh, the, the joke that everybody's been waiting for, uh, there was an opossum that a, sh- uh, a woman picked up a scared opossum that had found its way into a bar in Brooklyn and she carried it outside. And, of course, that brings up, you know, the jo- joke that I'm sure you're going to love. An opossum walks into a bar, sits next to a grasshopper, says to the grasshopper, hey, you know they have a drink here named after you? And the grasshopper says, they have a drink named Larry? See, that is one of the <laughs> – you throw the opossum variation <laughs> to that old grasshopper joke. All right, coming up in the – And it's uh, just as funny. Hey, that is the end of the show, the weekly wrap, right? Am I right about that, Chris? Do we have yeah. a bonus? I think we have a bonus. I, well, yeah, we have a bonus. I don't know when if we're going to run watching, the listening to the podcast. I don't know when we're going to run run the bonus. Could be now. Could be never. Could be you know in the upside down world. We'll we'll, we'll find out <laughs> in Stranger Things five. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bruce Wolf, and this is my world. Remember when you could go to the ballpark and watch Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa hit them out during batting practice? Well, McGuire has retired, and Sammy can't be trusted. But this week, you could have gone to Olympia Fields and seen a murderer's row of golf talent hitting him where you ain't ever going to. And sure, people watch for the aesthetic pleasure, but there's a practical side, too. We all think we're going to learn something by watching their swings. Gee, I wonder if Tiger thinks the same swing thought I do. Pull the blinds down, then whoosh, extension, not tension. Don't forget the finish. Park the car in the garage, Gary Player once said. Hold the club like a bird. All those images turn the golf swing into a picture puzzle for us. But these guys, they don't look like they're thinking of anything. They're just doing it. Oh, well, if I can't learn any golf by watching them, maybe I can learn golf announcing. I feel like, where's Waldo? And I am Waldo in this picture. This is the old, uh, I'm going to have uh, milk pour out of the newspaper trick that Steve Williams does uh, very well. And uh, Tiger finds much delight in. I will now yell, you to man, in the middle of Tiger's backswing, Patrick. You to man. All right, Tiger, only uh, one more shot here. Other people who would like a chance, please. 
if Woody Allen ever remakes Zelig, he can use that tape. But I think Tom Watson would rather have Gary McCord back announcing the Masters than me. I'm Bruce Wolf. Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. Oh, Tim, wasn't I good? I was really no. funny on TV, wasn't I? Uh, but you know, that's not <laughs> that's my a life shame anymore. we had to save that for the bonus segment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, save the best for last there. But I just, uh, that, that's, that's not me anymore, Tim. Uh, I, uh, I can't make it in that line of business. So, you know, you have to find your own lane uh, in this hurly burly radio slash podcast slash Ruku uh, Sudoku world that we have. And there's so, more lanes. That's a, that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, my lane is plagiarizing national review and commentary magazine, including their <laughs> podcast. What is your lane? Uh, plagiarizing Norm Macdonald. How about that? Yeah. You know, and, uh, let's see, is all his stuff in the public domain? No, it's not. Even though he died, you can take from, uh, use Winnie the Pooh though, because Winnie the Pooh is in the public domain. So, you know, go ahead and, uh, er all you want uh but yeah try to try to avoid the play you know i always said one of one of my best lines is plagiarism is the sincerest form of flattery and you can steal that line if you want because it, it almost <laughs> begs to be stolen so it's a, you're sounding quite presidential actually thank you <laughs> yeah it's Speaking a, of probably Joe probably Biden. the highest ranking plagiarist <laughs> in history oh man i mean he uh he but if he would only stick to plagiarism I mean, the problem with him is that he misstates so many facts. I mean, well, we know the tall tales, of course, like the latest one was that he had this, he was commissioned by the Navy, uh, Naval Academy, and that, of course, never happened. But, you know, and he talks about a minor incursion <laughs> that the uh, Russians, no, 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 Mr. <laughs> President, you're not just popping off. You're not just drooling while you're taking the Acela train. Uh, yeah. No, this is not, supposed it's to not say corn that, pop you're going after now. Yeah, you're not supposed to say that we're going to uh, use the military to defend Taiwan. I mean, maybe we do, but have you heard of strategic ambiguity? Okay. You know, and, and, and we thought Trump was going to be bad. Well, unfortunately, we're not uh, like the president. Uh, we don't have to fake it. We have uh, we have souls. We have histories, and and Chris is here to to plumb the depths of that right now. Chris, all in, yes, all in five minutes, we're going to get to know Tim. <laughs> all in five minutes. To, uh... You think we're, we're going to have to stretch? I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bruce, the listeners need to know. WJOB mm. needs to know. You've been in this uh, game for quite a while. How did you get started? Well, as you know, I uh, started in the 1940s as uh, Jack Benny's sound man. And uh, I made the sound of his trousers uh, chafing against uh, e each other uh, as he strode across the stage. Uh, in the 1950s, I was thrown out of the uh, Soviet Union for being a member of the Republican Party. And, you know, uh, what... what what was the question again? <laughs> How'd you so, get started? <laughs> Athlete's oh, <yeah>. Feet. <laughs> Athlete's Feet uh, on WXRT. It was a feature for uh, the non-sports oriented. And uh, I did that uh, once a week, then twice a week, then five days a week. And then I jumped over to the loop and Terry Hemmert was very upset with me because I was being disloyal. I mean, she's still at WXRT, so I can understand that. Uh, and uh, then it snowballed. I was the sportscaster who... Uh, was also an attorney, and that was neat. Sports Illustrated did a feature on me uh, regarding that. Wayne Gretzky was on the cover of that as the Sports Illustrated Athlete of the Year. Uh, and I would have preferred a transgender swimmer, but uh, it was in the <laughs> '80s, and uh, we weren't as or a fat back girl then. in a bikini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, then it snowballed uh, into TV. Uh, and then it snowballed right into hell <laughs> because uh, got fired a few times. And, uh, I, and I finished, I believe, two days shy of uh, having enough time uh, put in the television service to, uh, to be eligible for uh, Carol Marine's uh, prestigious Chicago Television Academy Silver Circle. So I missed it by that much. But that, that's basically my life story. So I think a lot of people got to know you because no one listens to XRT at the, at the loop. Uh, what, what was, what was the, the loop in the heyday of Dahl, Meyer, Johnny B. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah you have one yeah. crazy story, story from that era. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm the straw that stirred the drink uh, there. Uh, yeah, sure. Dahl, Meyer, Brand Meyer, Hall of Famers. Yeah. Me not. Uh, but what's the common element to all those shows? 
than me. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, they were all singing, but I had the mouth. And uh, what, uh, you know, a, a great story. Uh, the best story for me personally on Jonathan Brandmeier was we were interviewing Howard Cosell once. And, uh, Cos- and Johnny liked to uh, stick pins in the, in the, in the egos and, uh, of uh, the, the stars. And I uh, enjoyed doing the work for him. Uh, sometimes he didn't want to get his hands dirty, but we're talking to Cosell and he's pontificating and he starts talking about his uh, class that he's teaching on sports at Yale. And he starts talking about it. And I I just said, "Uh, Mr. Cosell, you teach a class in, and this was a phone interview. You you, you teach a a class uh, on sports at Yale. And he said, yes. And I go for credit. And (laughs) <laughs> Click, hung up. So Johnny loved it. I mean, I thought Johnny was going to be upset because I ended the interview right then. No, but he thought it was great. So that was, I mean, there are a million highlights. There, there, were, there were a million highlights. But that was a fun one, it was to prick the uh, inflated balloon of an ego of the Howard Cosell. There you go. And speaking of ego, you've left about a minute and a half for us to get to know Tim. Well, I mean, really. Come on, he's a sidekick. Uh, Again, we yeah. can stretch. <laughs> Tim, let's uh, quickly, uh, we can talk about your political uh, bona fides at another time. We might do a memory segment and you guys can rehash some of those. But uh, let's talk about, you're you're a well-known traveling comic, a a staple at Zany's. Uh, I don't know if well-known is accurate, but yeah, I'll take take the the rest. You don't think in Minneapolis that they know your name pretty well, Michigan? I mean, there's there's, there's places, I think, that that, that the Tim Slagle name. There's a Sunoco at 73rd and Halstead, I believe. it's kind of I've got kind of like Jerry Lewis. I'm very famous in France. <laughs> <laughs> and and how I uh, got to know you in in a comedy meeting politics was a show you uh, did with uh, Lewis Black. Maybe you can tell a Whoa. story about yeah that. yeah it was uh, it was a show I produced in Minneapolis called the Mudslingers Ball. That uh, 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 Lewis Black, Will Durst, myself, Jeff, Jenna, um, uh, a political debate show. We actually uh, uh, we made we we were on for two weeks, uh, and uh, uh, on the air in Minneapolis before uh, on KSTP. Until, and if uh, I had known about the Lewis Black thing, I would have shown a lot more deference to you, Tim. I, <laughs> I apologize right now. Oh man! I mean, I worked with Buzz Kilman. I mean, it, 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 <laughs> Nothing against Buzz; he was great. Gentlemen, uh, we're gonna. Sh- Play a clip of Tim's probably most famous bit explaining uh, how do you explain taxes to children if you want to set it up, Tim? Uh, yeah, this is a bit I, I, I started doing. If this kid, the kid in this bit was a, was a human, uh, he'd be in his 30s by now. He'd be like <laughs> <laughs> middle-aged. <laughs> generation about taxes. Well, if you have kids, teach them. And the best time you can do this is on Halloween. <laughs> See, because they're going to put in about eight full hours of power trick-or-treat. They're going to be bringing home a nice big bag of what should be take-home candy. (laughs) Just greet your little tyke at the door. Hey, that's a nice big bag of candy you got there, Tony Stark. (laughs) But first of all, now see, just because you made this much, we have to take away this much income tax. <laughs> to ensure you'll have candy in your old age, <laughs> pay the Social Security tax. <laughs> crying. <laughs> You're going to see it in 50, 60 years. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll just put that right up here, won't touch it till then. <laughs> I got a level with you, man. Grandpa's going to eat all that. <laughs> You'll have grandchildren of your own, don't you? Well, last of all, we can't forget that state tax, can we? 
Oh, wait a minute. We're in Minnesota, aren't we? There's your Snickers bar. Oh, wait, wait, here, this is funnier. Hold on just a minute. Payday! Uh, what, we're going to eat that right now? Hold it just a minute. <laughs> Sales tax. <laughs> you know, I, th I think kids are smarter than that. But if you did their kid, you wouldn't even get dressed up the next year. You're probably going to spend the whole evening on the couch in front of the tube. And w when mom puts out that big bowl of candy for the other kids... He's just gonna walk over to that bowl, dump it in his bag. Hey, I'm on welfare! <laughs> hey, that's all for me. Thank you very much. Good night.